हेलो फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम बैक टू लेसन नंबर फाइव दिस इज़ द नाइन्थ वीडियो ऑन इंक्लूसिव ग्रोथ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू व्हाट वी डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो ऑन सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स वी सॉ दैट सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स वर द सेवेंटीन गोल्स अडोप्टेड बाई द यूनाइटेड नेशंस इन टू एज पार्ट ऑफ इट्स ट्वेंटी एजेंडा so india has also made a road map to achieve these sdgs by 2030 by integrating its national policies with the uh, commitments that it has made towards the sustainable goals okay and also in a way we are going to achieve inclusive growth social economic development by uh, you know achieving uh, these goals uh, by having policies and schemes which work towards uh, achieving various sustainable development goals so we are inti- we have integrated the national policies with these global commitments now what is the broad policy framework that uh, that we work upon for this is basically the niti ayog's sdg india index sustainable development goal india index and the national indicator framework uh, monitor progress okay nif uh, monitor progress so we use these to Uh, to track our progress on the sdg uh, uh, achievements uh, vision 2030 uh, we have kept a vision for us that we will become a 5 trillion dollar economy by 2030 and will achieve 100% electrification uh, in the country by electrifying each and every household uh, so there are various uh, goals in this vision uh, 2030 that again you can see uh, from the niti ayog document what is this uh, but here we are focusing more on um, uh, you know the sustainable development goal and what is the road map uh, towards that so the first one is about no poverty we have already seen that in order to reduce poverty we have taken a lot of steps in the in the um, past also uh, we have achieved a significant uh, progress there uh, we saw in the previous video that we have reduced um you know uh, multi dimensional poverty by um, you know almost 27 crore people were brought out of it in 15 16 years time duration uh but we also saw that there are various challenges various shortcomings also so what further we need to do is basically to expand our social safety nets uh social safety nets so that um, uh you know people who are on the verge of again falling back into poverty or who are more vulnerable uh, get some kind of safety net uh, so what is that by providing them with universal health coverage now why is health coverage very very important because um, you know health emergency is one incident or one situation or a circumstance which is a very very big factor to push a family into poverty okay so if a family has just gone out gotten out of poverty but if one um, incident of any health emergency like a heart attack or you know a major accident or anything uh, you know it can push back the family into uh, into you know lot of debt and poverty uh, because the health expenses are very very huge and if there is no health coverage then Uh, it is difficult for people to to you know sustain their above poverty levels uh, rural infrastructure again very very important because infrastructure is enabling uh, factor for the people to get into economic activities to sell their produce because you can imagine the importance of a road okay to a village so if there is a road to a village imagine that this road can be used by the people to uh to to bring their produce to the markets to go to the hospitals early to send their children it can increase the transportation there so so many new avenues open up if there is good infrastructure and we have also uh, started the aspirational districts and aspirational block program in the country uh, this is a niti ayog's flagship program uh wherever there is high poverty incidence high multi dimensional poverty so basically the districts and blocks in the country which are backward in the sense that the developmental indicators are poor there they are called the aspirational districts or blocks and they have been given special attention 
for development by integrating the regular schemes only uh, but you know uh, by having more focused attention there uh, so again lot of progress in this in aspirational districts and block programs uh, so this is another way of reducing the poverty which is the recent work that we are doing in this area then the next one is about uh, the decent work and economic growth sdg 8 uh, very very important because giving employment to the people generating economic activity is the only way through which you can bring about economic uh, inclusion of the people okay so uh, how we can generate more employment give decent work to the people by giving a boost to the msme sector this again we have seen previously that msme is one sector where there is a lot of uh, scope for creation of new jobs because these are labor intensive sectors okay these are labor intensive rather than being capital intensive so more jobs are generated meaningful jobs are generated and there is a target to generate 5 crore new jobs by 2030 via prime minister employment generation program okay uh, labor reforms also need to be brought this is again in the agenda to formalize employment and ensure minimum wages so we need to secure the rights of the laborers on one hand and also reduce the uh, legal compliances for the industries so these are the two things which need to run hand in hand uh, again you may be seeing that these are the two um, kind of disputing uh, things like you know on one hand we are talking about the rights of the laborers on other hand we are talking about um, you know uh, reducing the legal compliances requirement for the industrialists um, but these two can go together if you know the labor laws are are sim are simplified um, uh, you know they are made easy to understand and uh, the everything lies in proper implementation at the end of the day okay so as a society we have to understand that these laws are for everyone's benefit in the long term uh, then the next one is sdg 10 which is reduced inequalities what do we have to do here is basically we are already doing we are having progressive taxation wealth redistribution policies are getting adopted by which we are taking wealth from the highly uh, high income earning people and redistributing it among the poor people um, then strengthen affirmative action for marginalized commu uh, communities by giving them uh, you know various kinds of benefits various scholarships reservations etc so this is again a step where inequalities can be reduced there are various cross sectoral priorities also like you know we need to work in education health renewable energy various areas uh, as we have seen that in education we have achieved some good uh, progress in terms of enrollment ratio but when it comes to actually spending on education that again needs to be increased so we need to increase our budget allocation on education um, uh, on teacher training so as per the national education um, new education policy this is a six percent of gdp needs to be spent on education health also we have seen that the who recommends that we recommend that we spend five percent of our gdp on the health infrastructure and health facilities however uh, still we are spending very less about 1.5 percent which we have targeted to increase to 2.5 percent by 2030 so again a remarkable increase needs to be done but obviously it will be done slowly because we have other priorities also then in terms of renewable energy our target is achieving 500 gigawatt through investments and green modernization so uh, uh, again we are having a long way to go in this area also but a lot of work is currently happening and we can see that in the coming five years now nah, there's just five years left to achieve the target uh, you know a lot of improvement will be seen in this area also now obviously in order to do all these things we need financing like you know the government alone cannot uh, invest in big infrastructure projects uh, so for that 
you know we need to mobilize financing from the market uh, and public private partnership is one way of doing it like for example big infrastructure projects like national highways railways bridges and you know other big big projects big ticket projects for that we get a lot of uh, foreign aid also like you know foreign loans we get loans from the world bank adb asian development bank from other countries like japan and also through private uh, private and pub private public partnership okay public private partnership which is ppp so we need to mobilize almost 120 lakh crore rupees which is 120 trillion rupees as per the estimates of niti ayog um, uh, you know to in order to have the infrastructure in health education and physical infrastructure in electricity infrastructure that we want to have okay and also through green bonds so that you know we invest more into renewable energy and and, and other eco-friendly initiatives we need to leverage the international aid i have already discussed this um, for example 150 million india un development partnership fund uh, this can be leveraged uh, because ultimately uh, we need money for investments into these projects then some of the examples uh, that um, you know some of the case studies that uh, that we can see here or we can mention in the answer writing also about the uh, united nation sdg partnership with india so how united nations is helping so united nation as a body you know there are various uh, programs that the united nations run so one is a undp which is united nation development program and skill india so it is helping undp is helping skill india mission to train more than 40 crore people in the country okay by enhancing vocational education and it has actually impacted a lot by improving the employability in various sectors like manufacturing and services okay so it has actually shown some results here uh, it is you know by increasing the productivity of the people because if we if we train them it will obviously increase their productivity their effectiveness uh, and you know youth is basically getting empowered so this is how the united nations is supporting this is how we are leveraging the international organizations then another example is of unicef unicef is helping uh, with swachh bharat abhiyan which is towards rural sanitation and also urban sanitation but here it is particularly helping with the rural sanitation to achieve 100 percent uh, rural sanitation basically making uh, rural areas our villages odf free uh, you know general cleanliness of the village every house to have its own uh, you know toilet so uh, these are the various things on which the swachh bharat mission targets so unicef is has partnered on that and uh, you know it is actually targeting the two goals which is sdg 1 and sdg 3 actually okay sdg 1 and sdg 3 is getting uh, targeted here basically it is helping reduce poverty also in improving the health outcomes um, uh, you know in in the country by achieving uh, because sanitation is a part of health and obviously you know when you reduce poverty when you give good health good sanitation to the people it it has a multiplier effect on the economy because people become more productive they fall less ill and um, uh, you know it is it is better for the economic activity of the area then next is unep uh, united nations environment program uh, this is uh, helping with the international solar alliance which is uh, basically india has co-founded this uh, uh, and partnering with 121 countries to promote solar energy okay uh, then another one is uh, is un women and gender budgeting okay so this is another forum of the united nations it helps india with the gender budgeting to support india's gender responsive budgeting basically so that you know uh, uh, we invest in women development uh, because 50 percent of our workforce is uh, is currently not getting its due share in terms of uh, education opportunities uh, economic uh, uh, activities etc so uh, it is helping with that uh, 15 percent of our uh, actually union budget of last year 24 25 uh, you know was uh, gender response uh, you know was towards women development uh, so uh, UN, un women helps india adopting policies into a budget 
so so that it is gender responsive and it has empowered women in workforce and education basically so um, uh, you know these are the various ways uh, through which um, uh, through which we have partnered with the international organizations in order to work in various areas like gender equality then achieving uh, renewable energy sanitation health skilling people uh, generating employment uh these kind of partnerships they they enhance our capacity okay as a country uh but obviously they face a lot of challenges also uh, and everything depends on how we implement them so our bureaucratic implementation bureaucratic delays if it happens then no point in you know partnering with this international organization because we need to improve there also so uh, we need to have such mechanisms in place whereby uh you know there is a lot of transparency and accountability in the system whereby the actual uh, spirit behind this programs is achieved okay in letter and spirit we achieve this goals so um with this uh, we'll end this video uh, we'll continue the inclusive growth in one more video finally uh, whereby we'll study about the clean energy affordable energy renewable energy uh, and uh, you know because it is very important energy is one thing which affects various sectors also and overall inclusive growth is somehow dependent on uh, clean energy access to energy okay so we'll study that and then we'll start with the new topic so thank you